Hey, as you can see, we have another video here for RL circuits, and this is a circuit we're going to be looking at. We have a 24 volt DC source, we have a 4 ohm resistor, and we have two 8s in parallel. And in this branch, we also have our inductor L, which is two Henry's. And we're going to be looking at this switch at four different points, this switch, this circuit at four different points in time. The first, of course, is immediately after the switch has been closed, which we call time equals zero, right when the switch is closed. Then we'll look at it and analyze it after the switch has been closed for a long time. And then we're going to reopen this switch and look at all of our values. And then we'll look at it for when the switch has been opened again for a long time. And for each of those four points in time, we're going to answer these seven questions. Okay. Now, before I get started in closing the switch, I like to look at the circuit, have these resistors and I have this inductor. The inductor is the interesting thing because what do inductors do? They resist changes in current. They don't like to have the current changed through them. So they resist and they resist the change in current by producing a self-induced voltage, a back EMF. Okay, we want to keep that in mind when we look at this circuit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to close this switch like that. And right when we close the switch, this inductor begins to resist that change in current. And when the switch is just closed, that when it resists the change in current the most. And it resists so much that the current through this whole branch, the current through the inductor and this 8 ohm resistor is 0 amps. There's no current flowing through this branch right when the switch is closed. Well, right when the switch is closed, we do have current flowing through this outer loop. Okay, we have a 4 and an 8. We want to know what is the current through the battery. Well, the current is the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance. The voltage is 24. The equivalent resistance of these two resistors in series, the 4 and the 8, is 12. 24 divided by 12 is 2, and that means that there's 2 amps of current flowing through the battery. What we also have, as we just said, this 4 and this 8 are in series with the battery, so it should make sense that the current through the 4 and the current through the 8 ohm resistor is also 2 amps. All right, now that's kind of the hard part. The, hard, the easier thing to do is maybe to get the voltages. We just use Ohm's law of equals I times R. This 8 is this 8. This 8 is this 8. So we said there's no current. If there's no current, then there's no voltage. So the voltage across this 8 ohm resistor is 0 volts. But there is current here. There's 2 amps of current. And the voltage is the current times the resistance. 2 times resistance is 16. That there's 16 volts across a drop of 16 volts across this 8 ohm resistor this is a 4 ohm resistor it also has 2 amps of current in it and 2 times 4 is 8 so there's a voltage drop of 8 volts across this resistor now what about the inductor okay there's no current but there is voltage across the inductor because it's resisting the change of current right when the switch is closed well when the current comes out 4 ohm resistor, there's 8 volts is used through this 4 ohm resistor. That means there's 16 left here. So across here we have to have 16. There's nothing here because there's no current. So all of the voltage is across the inductor and that means there's 16 volts of voltage across the inductor. Now you might give it a minus sign here. Sometimes you see people put a minus sign because it's the opposite the battery because it's resisting the battery. It also makes sense that this is 16 that this also has to be 16 because parallel circuit elements have to have the same voltage drop across them. Okay, that's all the values for the switch, just for the circuit, just when the switch is closed. Okay, now we're going to look at the next point in time after the switch has been closed for a long time. We're going to answer all those same questions. Well, after the switch has been closed for a long time, then we have this inductor and the inductor can no longer resist or is no longer resisting the changes in the current. The current reaches its maximum, so therefore there's no changing in the current and there's no change in the current, then there's no induced voltage across that inductor. And that means that inductor basically acts like a long straight wire or a short, you'll hear people say. We have a wire, there's no voltage drop across that wire.
So that means the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put down here for number seven that the voltage across the inductor after the switch has been closed for a long time is zero volts. Okay? I want to figure out next what's the current through the battery. Well, this is no longer kind of in play in the circuit. So now we just have two eights in parallel. The equivalent resistance of two eights in parallel is four. Four ohms. Well, that four, those two eights, or that four, that equivalent four, is in series with this four. So that means that the current is the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance. The voltage is 24. The equivalent resistance of those three resistors is 8. 24 divided by 8 is 3. Okay? Now, and then we're going to look at the current through this 8 and also the other 8 because this is no longer in place. So now we have two, uh, these two branches have the same resistance. So we have a current of 3 coming out of the battery. It splits evenly here and here. So we have 1.5 amps through 1 8 and 1.5 amps through the other 8 also. Okay? So now let's see what's the next thing we're going to do. I think we're going to look at the voltage across this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, across this resistor, the 4 ohm resistor, because we have 3 amps of current. <clears throat> excuse me. We have 3 amps of current. And we're going to have 3 amps of current times 4. That means we have 12 volts across the 4 ohm resistor. Okay, now these two resistors, you know, the voltage drop across the two 8s, each of them has 1.5 amps. 1.5 times 8 is 12. So that means there's 12 volts across that 8, and there's 12 volts across that 8 ohm resistor. Okay, so there we go. We got all the values for after the switch has been closed for a long time and the inductor is no longer resisting any change in current. It has no more self-induced voltage. Okay, now before we go to the next slide, I just want to talk about which direction the current is flowing in each of those branches. Okay, so we have our positive terminal and negative terminal. We're talking about conventional current, the flow of positive charge. So in this first loop, the current flows in that direction, and this outer loop, the current flows in that direction. Okay, because that's going to become important for the next slide. All right, let's do that. Now, we have the switches closed, so I just have the same values. These are all the same values I brought over from the previous slide. The switch is still closed, and some of the values are not all of them, but some of them are going to change. Just three of them are going to change. But when we open the switch right here, okay, the switch has now been opened. What happens when we open the switch? That current goes away, that current goes away, and that current goes away. So we have no more current through the battery, no more current through the 4 ohm resistor, and that means that the number 2, the current through the battery, goes from 3 amps immediately down to 0. And the current here is 0, and that means, <coughs> excuse me, that means the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor goes from 12 immediately down to 0. Okay, now, what's going to happen here? We open this switch. The current goes away, and this current is going to be reducing also. But, once again, the inductor does resist changes in current. It doesn't want the current to change. It's going to reproduce another back EMF to keep that current flowing in this direction. It's going to be kind of pulling, pumping, pushing the current through this, producing a back EMF to keep the current flowing in this direction through the inductor. And that means actually that the current through this outer branch here is going to change directions. Not the value, but just the direction. It's still 1.5 and still 1.5. So when we open that switch, and immediately after it's been opened, there's going to be a back EMF or an EMF, induced EMF across that inductor. So this is no longer zero. It's going to jump up to some value. Well, what's it going to be? Well, let's see. We can use Kirchhoff's loop rule because we know it's 1.5 and 1.5 through this induct through this resistor and this resistor. Well, they get the voltage. 1.5 times 8 is 12. So you can see, right? It's still 12. 1.5 times 8 is 12. It's still 12. We have a 12 volt drop here, a 12 volt drop here. Well, those two 12 volt drops they have to add up to 24 volts across a positive 24 volts across this inductor so now this is 24 volts okay we found that using Kirchhoff's loop rule okay so there you go 
That's all the value for immediately after the switch has been closed. Excuse me. Immediately after the switch is open, right after it's open. Now I could make a fourth slide, as I mentioned, to show what happens to all those values after that switch is opened and it's been open for a long time. Well, after it's been open for a long time, the energy that was stored inside the magnetic field of that inductor has been all used up to drive the current in this direction around that loop and through those resistors and all the energy gets used up. So after the switch has been open for a long time, all of these values go back to zero and kind of start all over again. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found that helpful. I know that was a lot to go through in hopefully 10 minutes or less, but we looked at that circuit and analyzed that RL circuit for those four different points in time. Please, if you found that helpful, do me a favor. It helps me out. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a positive comment for this video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.